What's going on, FBA fam? So I missed the first hour of this space. However, I am going to make it up by putting on the back end of the space a lot of the sentiments of fellow foundational black Americans and some who are probably not FBA. The sentiments on Kamala Harris and selection and a few of the bootlegs so you know who they are. Peace and black empowerment. Put these images in newspapers and say, hey, look at these poor downtrodden Negroes in the South with those dirty Southerners. Send us some money so we can help them. Just 10 cents a day will help the little starving slave Negro. And they pocket the money and um, give us lip service. OK, that was the big. Right. Thing. So that, that's not that's not true. That's yes, not true. They're honest. Then, no, they were then, honest. Then, sir, how no, no, it's just. Oh no! no look no. at uh, uh, the dudes. Let's slow it down. Let's slow it down. Because how come when slavery was over, when black people started moving to the north, you started facing the exact same racism? If all of these white people in the north were so good and so grand, when the Civil War started, you had the the draft riots where the white people in the North were attacking black people in New York. So where's all these good upstanding white people you're talking about? Slavery was in the North too, by the way, sir. Yes. No, I'm okay. very, I'm very well aware, sir. Uh, I understand you have a nice little suit in your profile picture, but I promise you, it does not mean you're Dustin, on this topic at this point, you're sounding dusty. Okay. Ma'am, your white ass can jump right the fuck up out this conversation where you was. It's between me and him. Uh, now, uh, let, let's go back to the, uh, let's go back to, you know, what I was saying a minute. Like, say that you didn't have the white support from the North, which, you know, you doubt that that's the case, but it actually is. Okay. Not really. um, well, They huh? didn't. Reneged on our reparations. They were supposed to give us reparations right after slavery, and they reneged Look, on that. Where's all that white support? No, no. I, I, reparations are a fucking fallacy. That's not going to happen. But at the end of the it day, is, let, let me put it to you this way. Oh, no. Hope, no, no. Well, let's, let's pump the brakes on that. Now, why do you think it's not going to happen? Because it's going to happen one way or another. Because the money is going to be used to give to us, or it's going to be used to... Um, waste money on militarized spending to get a false sense of protection, which is what you guys do. You spend billions and trillions of dollars on subjugating weapons, weapon, weapons used to subjugate us, and that can only go so far. So Ain't nobody subjugating you right now, sir. You what now? I said nobody's subjugating you right now. You got a better suit than anything I have in my house, so I, I don't want to hear about you being but, subjugated. Yes, I am subjugated. Yeah. Because even, even with my suit, you in your trailer park, you still have more protections than me. All right? Yeah, because I'm willing to fight for my shit. Like, if somebody come in my trailer park trying to steal my shit, I'm going to shoot them. I mean, it is what it is. Right. And you're willing to be white for yours. Your whiteness is monetized. You have uh, millions of dollars worth of whiteness, sir. I, no, I ain't got millions of dollars worth of shit. I'm still struggling week to week. But oh your God. whiteness, your whiteness gives you millions of uh, dollars. Who is this Donica person that keeps unmuting her mic? On. You got, you're gonna have your time, Dustin, man. Dustin, calm down, calm down. I know that asbestos in that trailer gets you riled up, but calm down. But look, you have millions of dollars worth of whiteness that gives you protection, sir. That I can't even pay for. I can't pay for the protection you get with your whiteness, sir. I can't pay for that. I call it the 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 Cal Rittenhouse effect. You understand? You know what the Cal Rittenhouse effect is? Yeah, yeah I do. So you so you live in a, you live in the ghetto, or do you live in a nice gated community and a nice house, I live, sir? I live in a gated community, very nice. Right, that's what I'm saying. So don't sit here and say that me and you are any different. Um, yeah, but you have more protection than me in your trailer. No, you're, you're probably, just projecting because you're black. No, 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 no. Listen to me. I know you're probably sitting there with a meth pipe on the stove now in your trailer. But in the system of white supremacy, you have more protections than me. For example, a Kyle Rittenhouse, he's a low life trailer park hillbilly like you. But as we saw, he was allowed to go out here and kill people. And he had the white media. He had the white court systems, the white police force, the whole judicial system on his side protecting him. That man had tens of millions of dollars worth of protection based on his whiteness. I couldn't pay for that. 
I can't go out here and kill somebody and have the media bend over backwards for me, have the judges bend over backwards for me. See, that's what your whiteness pays for. You right. See, you're, that, yeah, but how how is that any different than the uh, black guys that are killing people in Chicago every weekend and uh, it afforded the same type of you know judicial prejudice because they ain't going to prosecute those crimes. They ain't going to go after those black, the black people. people who's it's the name. same thing, sir. No, it ain't. Name the black people because most of those shootings ain't even from black people. I think those are white supremacists doing those shootings. They can never catch the people. Oh doing the yeah, shootings. white supremacists in Chicago. Okay, so let's right. tell me who's right. doing. Name name the black person who's out here shooting everybody and he's not getting prosecuted. Name them. Dude, there is literally no, last no, year. Nothing. No, no, name sir. Moment. Last year and uh, on. For You're babbling. Okay, that means you don't have an answer. I don't even want to hear the babble. There's no black version of a cow ridden house, sir. Okay, black people don't get to go around shooting people, and folks know about it, and they're not getting prosecuted. That doesn't work. That Chicago deflection don't work in that case, sir. You're just babbling, sir. Okay, Dustin, we don't want to do that. Now you're arguing in bad faith. You're just saying anything now. But um, going back to the reparations, um, Dustin, now when, when reparations come through and it's going to come, how are you going to feel about just, it? Just real quick, I, 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 want to, I want it to be clear. I'm not arguing in bad faith. Okay, yeah, you're you, not, you, you, no, 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 you won't let me speak. You literally keep hitting the mute button because you can't answer. You're not speaking. <laughs> This white bitch talking over me is oh, really oh, pissing white me bitch. off. Can yeah. you just calm down? Sounds, uh, Dustin, watch your mouth, man. Watch I, your mouth. All right, I'm trying to, but can she just calm right. down? Is she going to get her, her chance? Okay. Now, what I'm saying is, while I might not know the names of the people in Chicago, and you are right in that respect, we know who okay. did. Okay. Hold on, Donica. Hold on, dear. Hold on. But go oh, ahead, Dustin. Jesus Christ. All right. While you are right, sir, I will concede the fact that, yes, we know who Kyle Rittenhouse is. He went out there and publicly, publicly did what he did. Fair enough. Not disputing that. Okay. But just because on 4th of July weekend in Chicago, there were 117 people shot. And and twenty people killed just because I don't know their name does not mean that they are not getting the same type of privilege that Kyle Rittenhouse was given because the the, the city knows itself is not prosecuting these people, sir. The nobody city knows, itself don't care. Nobody knows who the suspects are. We don't know who they are. So you're talking about unknown people. Nobody knows who those suspects are. We we can't assume that they're just black because of Chicago, because you y'all use Chicago as a euphemism for black, and there's a lot of Latinos up there. There are a lot of white supremacists up there. We don't know who did those shootings, sir, but we know what Kyle Rittenhouse did. We got him on camera murdering people, and we've got the, the court system on camera bending over backwards for them. So the whole what about black-on-black -black crime in Chicago, that's just not going to fly. But thank you, Dustin. No, thank no, you I, so I much. So you're going to drop me now. I, yeah, I don't want to hear Mayo babble. It's, it's just Mayo babble. I don't want to hear it. When you start trying to deflect into some Chicago, that's, that's a weak, failed argument, and it's in bad faith. Now, Donica, hop on, ma'am. Hello, sir. Um, I don't want to listen. Uh, Dustin should have had his name uh, be Dusty because yeah. that's what he sounded. I mean, I don't listen. I'm white. I love white people. Okay. Uh, but that was just it was uh, a little weak. Um, he's boasting about being in a trailer park. And I don't really think anyone should boast about that, regardless of demographic. Um, that being said, I do appreciate your comedy trick, or at least like lightheartedness of mm. these kinds of conversations. They do need to be had. Um, do I want to pre pay reparations as a tether? No, I don't. Obviously my, uh, ancestors didn't enslave anyone, but do I think you're slow down? Oh, slow, oh, down. slow down. Let's slow, let's slow down on that. Oh, let's slow uh, where'd your ancestors come from, ma'am? 
I'm a German woman. Okay. When did they immigrate here? Uh, three generations back. Um, 1915, 1920, right? Yeah, about 1912. Right, right, right. Um, so, yeah, when they came over here, they heard about all the goodies that this nation had accumulated from the labor of Foundation of Black Americans, all that free labor that we had to muster up and build up the wealth of this nation. And those Europeans heard about it. And they said, hey, you know what? Sign me up. We know what happened. We know how the wealth was accumulated. We know that there was an injustice, but we know that there's a, a lane for us white people. So let's go on over there and take advantage of those gifts that's going to be given to us. So the minute you got off that boat on Ellis Island, you're on the hook for the debt, man. So all of that, we didn't enslave anybody. Once you became a part of the U.S. government, you took on the debt of the U.S. government as a taxpayer. See how that works? Well, I didn't pay taxes. So well, I, I just Nobody pays know. taxes. No, no, yeah, shit. If you over here, you pay some taxes. You ain't over here not paying no taxes unless you sell ass on the track, and then you still got to pay some taxes somewhere. Never, God forbid. All right, all right, all right. Now, if you're on the track and getting an underground economy, okay, that's something different. But if you ain't on the track and but do you hold the same energy with like Rosa Parks? She was on the underground railroad too. I'm just saying. Um, <sighs> womp 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 womp, but. Like I said, oh, come you're on, on the hook. You're on the hook for the debt that's owed, ma'am. Got it? That makes sense, Donica? Mm, listen, uh, all I'm saying is that, okay, the work I didn't put in, I don't think you should be paid for the work you didn't put in. You know what I mean? Like, honestly. But no, the debt has been passed down and the benefits have been passed down to one group. So, yeah, we need to make everything equitable and we need to, to relieve that debt, you see. Now, Doc, where, where, where in the U.S. did you grow up now? New York. New mm -hmm. York. And you, yeah, I kind of, you kind of, I can tell by the sound of your voice, you didn't have a couple of brothers in your life. Never. Not I, once. I, I, Tariq. I don't believe never. that. I don't believe never. that. Never. I don't. So that's what you tell the white men. But listen. No, you, no. That's what I tell do, everyone. Do, do you Just think. Just because I love Dinah, me and mine. Do you think do you think you do you think you gave up some of your snow bunny cookies to the brothers was a form of reparations? To not you? once. I think never. You, I think in mm -mm. your mind you've already paid reparations. That was not a debt I needed to pay. No, man, I think in your mind you gave that little um, flea bitten European. No, no, my little poof ball. My uh, yes, I think you gave that European cooch and them flat pancake um, um, <laughs> cheeks up. You thought that was reparations. You're like, I've you already. You thought I had flat pancake cheeks. That's the crazy thing about right. it. Uh, right. right. Them flat pancake cheeks, that's not reparations. I love pancakes. Right. Yeah, that's right. You love your. Yeah, but I don't have them. I love mm -hmm. them because I can admire them from. Your afar. pancake cheeks are not reparations, ma'am. I right. never gave those up, Tariq. Hers I'm first. Not, I'm not feeding first families first, in now. Zimbabwe with my first, cheeks. First, 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 as last. All right. You give up that Never. ass. Never. No. Give up the ass later, but give up the purse first. All right. Never. Neither. Yeah. All Neither. right. All right, dear. Let me let you get back to your mayonnaise. All right. Thank you, dear. All right. All right. Nope. You know, she she thinks she paid her reparations already. No, ma'am. The little sulfur smelling cakes you're giving up. That's not reparations. Matro, hop on, ma'am. Hey, Tariq. Uh, yeah, so uh, I had a question to ask you, but uh, since we were on the topic of reparations, which these whiteies are not approved of, uh, we got a big uh, uh, push tonight. You know, Ilhan Omar, who's uh, pro-reparations, got reelected again. So that's a good cause for the reparations. She said on multiple occasions that she's pro-reparations for FBA. So that's a good cause. These whiteies are uh, not going to be happy tonight heard her say that i've never heard her say she was pro reparations when did she say that she said that on multiple occasions in the past uh, it's even on her tweets you can uh, read that uh since 2020 she's been pro reparations for fbs yeah i've never heard that uh, I, now to be honest i don't believe it i've never heard it and i don't believe it has anybody else in this room heard elan omar say she was pro reparations and i, I do because i have the 
I have the tweet, so you can you can just read. You just... Put up, put it up, put the tweet up in the jumbotron. How do how do I do that here? Okay, um, I don't want to do a tutorial. You, you uh, just have to you just have to search Ilhan Omar reparations. You'll see multiple tweets since twenty, I believe 2019, 2020, where she said her she retweeted it was not a quote she retweeted that she was pro reparations for FBAs. Okay, I got to see that. I got to see yeah. it before I believe it. Now I'm assuming you're Somali because you're really caping for her hard, and you're yeah. in Canada. Right? You're yeah, Somali. well. You know, I'm caping for her, but I'm also caping for you guys. We can't let these whiteies get away with uh, past unpaid dues, right? But, um, but that, that that's that's. Uh, I just wanted to bring that up because you were on the talk of reparations. I did have a question for you regarding the tweet you posted a couple of days ago about that person you thought was a Somali immigrant uh, in Ohio, that doctor that was slurring out the N word multiple times. Right, because some people are saying she actually is. Some people think she's not. So she looks Somali, but. It's all over the place. So what's the deal with it? Well, the, first of all, I want to you know give you credit. You did delete that tweet and then posted. You said it was African immigrants. Some yeah. people were saying she's West that, African. I didn't want people to get into the, some semantics. We just know she's an African immigrant, and people wanted to argue some semantics. But yeah, go ahead. Right, right. So I was wondering why, in that case, since you consider all of us tethers, it doesn't really matter if we're Nigerian or Somali. Why did you have to point out she was Somali? I mean, whether she was Somali or not, it's irrelevant. You you had to post that she was Somali. You could have just said she's a, uh, a tether. Now, when did I have said? When have I said that all of you are tethers? I think you said that. No, I didn't. Say, I'm talking about the uh, the the foul. Like, not the. I'm not talking all Africans. I'm just saying the ones that are against FBAs are considered tether, right? That's what you just said. You said you look at all of us as being tethers. No, no, no. I meant, I, I meant just the ones that are against FBAs. I'm not talking about the... So are you against FBAs? I'm not an FBA. Oh, so are you against FBAs? I'm not against FBAs, no. Then why did you say I look at... You said us. That means you. So why would I look at you as a tether if you're not against us? No, okay. I must have reworded that wrong. I'm just talking about the ones you consider tethers. You right. might not consider me a tether, right. although I, you know, I would consider myself a tether just naturally because even even if I'm not against FBAs, if I'm taking over your college uh, scholarships that are meant for FBAs by by action, I'm considered a tether because I'm taking what's rightfully yours. Right now, what you're doing is called tether babbling because you ain't making no sense and you're babbling. You're saying stuff and now you're tether babbling. So now you're looking questionable. Right, right, right. Well, again, just going back to that tweet again. Like I said, I gave you credit. Like I said, you deleted it once it was confirmed. I was just questioning. I mean, if that was a Nigerian, you would have just called the Nigerian a tether. But it seems like you have a built-up anger towards Somalis. I don't know where that's coming from. Really? What? How so? Well, I mean, I, like I said, once you deleted that tweet, you just posted African immigrant instead of kind of confirming whether she's from. I think she's from Guinea, but again, it's not confirmed. But, yeah, I mean, it wasn't people, confirmed the first time, right? Um, a lot of people, they've not really confirmed exactly what part of Africa she's from. Some people are still saying that the woman is Somali and that she married into a Guinea family. So they're all over the place with it. You know, if, if, you look, if you look at her name, that is not a Somali name. That's a West African name. I don't right. know, I don't know where exactly in West Africa because I'm not West African, but I know it's a West African name. Her last name, right? Yeah, Diallo. It's not. A, it's not. A, it's not an East African name, let alone a Somali name. Right, and she don't look West African. You look at the woman; she doesn't look West African. So maybe she married, and this is why people are saying she married into a West African family. There's a. Do you know the people called Fulani's? Uh, the people that live in northern Nigeria, Ghana, uh -huh. those places. They kind of yeah. look like East Africans, but they're West Africans, like. You know, the, the, there are see, there are some the people from the woman. Y'all, your people are all over Africa trying to delineate. Oh, she ain't one of us. She ain't one of us. She ain't one of us. We just put, uh, hey, she's an African immigrant. We know she's from Africa somewhere. Yeah. Right. But that's what I'm saying. It's easier for you next time to say, hey, as a tether, I don't really care where she's from. She could be from Mars. But, hey, she's a tether at the end of the day. You know, instead of just saying, hey, she's a Somali because. You know, no. whatever, you know, built up anger you have towards us. You know what I mean? 
Now, anger now, you say anger towards you, Somali. What do you have for us to be angry about? I don't know. You seem to always point us out when we do something bad. In this case, we didn't even do anything, but you have to point it out. Um, well, you, yeah, you do you, you won't. You won't point uh, the Jamaican out. You'll just call him no, a tether. No, 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 sir. No. I do what you guys do because when you do something positive, you make sure people recognize you being Somali. Hell, you talked about Ilan Omar. She was the one running around talking about she's Somali first and everything else later. That's her saying that. That's why people were getting on her case. When you guys do something constructive, you say, hey, we're Somali. If you do some janky, be Somali. That's what we're well, saying. We, well, we're taking... But, but what's wrong you, with that? Like, I, I, I'm not, I'm not against you when you're saying FBA no, no, no. first. So why uh, are you against Ilhan Omar when she's saying Somali first? I wasn't against her. Okay, right. you are. There's nothing wrong with that. So keep that same energy when you win an election and you hollering about Somali whoop de whoop. Okay, great. If you sit up here and call people all types of weird names and do something janky, you're going to be Somali still. Right, right, but we can we can also be pro reparations in the same way that you said. Hey, we're, look, we're, you've done, different if, conversations. Two different conversations. Right. Um, I think our thing is keep the same energy. Us pointing out that you're Somalian ain't hating you. What kind of weird shit is that? No, but th th it was not a Somali to begin with. But even if she was a Somali, why couldn't you just say, "Hey, it's a tether"? I don't care if she's Somali um, or Nigerian. Why couldn't you no. just say she's a tether? Um, no, because she's a Somali or whoever, sometimes I'm going to just point out where you're from because that's important because y'all like to point out where you're from when you do something positive. I want you to point out where you're from when you do something janky. But most of the time it's only when Somalis. It's not, you know, I, I never hear you say, oh, look at that Nigerian or look at that Jamaican. You just usually say tether. That's a damn lie. You are lying your ass off. I don't know. Show me the tweets. <laughs> it's usually you're just saying it's a tether. You don't really care where they're from. That's a damn lie. That's, That's a bullshit lie. I mean that that past tweet. I, I, you just that you just I, proved my point. You said African immigrant. I mean, it, uh, in ten minutes of research, you probably could have figured out her nationality. And y'all still don't know that woman's nationality. Nobody really knows. I, I'm pretty sure somebody pointed out she's Guinean. I, again, I didn't really confirm. Saying, I just well, Guinea. You're talking about some Nigeria. Some people are saying Somali. I just put African immigrant. She's an African immigrant. Right. Well, okay. I, I just hope that you keep that same energy as well. Don't always point out when we do something off. And then when yeah, it's another I, African, you just yeah, say, hey, it's an African like, immigrant. Like, 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 keep like, that same. Like the Somali gangs. And there's like, there was a, a bust of a whole bunch of Somalis up there in Minnesota. Yes, I'm going to point that out. They're non FBAs. You're not because what y'all like to do is try to do crimes and then hide behind blackness. We're not letting that happen. You're damn right. I'm pointing you out when y'all come over here and do all these weird crimes. Hey, these ain't FBAs. These are not FBAs. Those are Somali immigrants. And y'all have a lot of Somali immigrants, especially in Minnesota, doing a lot of crimes up there. You're not going to hide your crimes behind us. Look, I, like I said, I, that's fine. I'm perfect. I agree with you. Just keep that same energy when it comes to other groups. Point out their nationalities we too, do or don't all. point it out at all. You got you coined that term tether. You might as well be using it, right? There's no point we even doing the research. Out all the time, we point out Nigerian, Haitian. There was a dude up there in New York who socked the cop, and he got beat up by the police. A Haitian dude. He had a Haitian flag on. So yeah, we pointed that. We point that out all the time. We always point out people's nationality. We do it all the time, sir. So don't be, don't be factually incorrect. You got to speak truth to power. Let me get my brother Eric John back up here. In here. EJ, hop on and speak to this guy. Hop on, EJ. EJ, hop on, brother. Hey, brother Tyreek. I got kicked off um, earlier, man. This is the problem with some of these people, man. They want to come in and project and just be all over the place. Like when you ask them, What's their status at the green card office? See, they so busy running about what we're doing and on a positive manner when they ain't even they ain't even looking for their people or even trying to help their people back in their homeland. This dude is Joloff babbling. He is a time wasting tiger. Ain't making no damn sense when he come up in here talking crazy. See, we don't eat Joloff you, in East Africa. That's what's African. Mute his mic, man. I don't listen to your dumb ass for the longest. 
You motherfuckers ought to be ashamed of yourselves uh, coming into these guys. Uh, please mute his mic. Look, if you're gonna be, if you're gonna be xenophobic, at least get it right. We don't need y'all in West Africa. I'm being I mean, real with you, sir. Shut your goddamn Joloff, mouth, man. Jollof is a West African food. Be we don't quiet. eat Jollof in East Africa. Be quiet, Africa. sir. Be quiet, sir. Go ahead. Be just, quiet. <laughs> just make Be sure quiet, you get. Sir. Just make sure Mute you get it right, right, sir. Mute your mic, dick sucker. Mute your mic, <laughs> Fleer. You in Canada talking stupid about what we need to do and what we don't need to do. I'm gonna call every last one of you. Come on, Tariq. Is this the best clean, you got? New balance, running tethers. Every time you niggas emotional say something battling, y'all are guilty by association. When y'all do something bad, I'm putting all you niggas in place. When y'all do something bad, and when y'all do something good, and when y'all are on code, I'm gonna salute y'all. But it's always cowards like you that come up into these spaces talking like the cowards, talking like the fleers, and talking like the bitches that you are. It's not our problem that your countries don't have toilets it ain't our problem that your country don't have the natural resources when you actually out here selling it to these other countries these european countries these asian countries see it's cowards like you that ain't having constructive conversations in these twitter spaces actually trying to get your people together and help your people to actually make your country better see when y'all do something good i salute y'all but you just can't be trying to separate yourselves in these other countries because if y'all do something bad they're gonna put all of y'all in the same damn place when are you idiots going to get it together, look yourselves in the mirror, and actually put in some goddamn work, man? You need to get like Burkina Faso, Mali, and Niger. They actually trying to get their shit together. What is going on in your country? What are you doing to try to help your people get their shit together, man? So the moral of the story is cowards like this ain't bringing that to constructive to these conversations. Throw their ass in the trash. They got flies all over their fucking faces. Every time I talk to one of you tethers, I got to keep my Febreze bottle ready to spray at you idiots. I don't like you tethers. I don't want to deal with you tethers. And people that is on code and they have a black first mindset to separate themselves from mush mouth fleeing jambalaya eating niggas like you. And I land my plan like right there, Tyreek. Thank you for letting me come up and speak, bro. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you. That was a whole lot of nothing. All right, Matro. Okay. Any last words, Matro? Let me let you get the last words, sir. Look, uh, again, I'm pro reparations. Like I said, I'm just saying keep that same energy. A tether is a tether. It doesn't matter if he's from Nigeria or Somalia. You don't have to, you know, point out to Somalis. I know you got this we do. We built do. up. I know you got okay. this built up anger. We're trying to figure out where it's coming from, but, you know, we'll, we'll eventually solve that. Thank you. Yeah, no, no, no. And thank you so much. But yeah, we're going to point you out. Yeah. We're going to point out whenever you do something weird, you're not going to just try to hide behind blackness. No, we're going to take the cap off and show that forehead and be like, nope, they're not like us. Because again, when y'all take a win, you make sure to let everybody know you're Somali. If you do anything constructive, you go out of your way to let people know you are different from us and you're different from everybody. That win is a Somali win. You want to talk about Ilan Omar? That uh, that win, she's running around hollering about how Somali she is. She's a Somali first, and you're very proud of her. Be proud of your criminals, too. You're not going to let your criminals hide behind blackness. You're not going to use blackness as your own personal garbage can. Nope, you're going to be a Somali criminal. We're going to point that out, too. All right, let's get... um. Let's get Billy. Mr. Billy, hop in, sir. Billy and I, I think you're from, from somewhere in Africa. Billy Majungu. Billy Majungu. Mr. Billy, hop on. You look like a Ugandan funeral director. Hop on. Billy Majungu. I'm Mr. Majungu. You unmute your microphone, and while we're waiting on you, we'll move over here to Miriam. Miriam, hop on. Hi, Tariq. How are you? I'm good, Miriam. How are you, ma'am? I'm good. I'm from Kenya. Before you ask me, and I've never been to this state, so I'm not a tether. Right. <laughs> but I have. A, <laughs> have yeah. I spoken? Have I spoken with you before? No, I've never spoken to you. Okay. Okay. So you're from Kenya, and you're not a tether. Are you in Kenya now? Or are you over here now? I am in Kenya right now. Okay, there you go. So what's on your mind, ma'am? I was a bit taken aback when I heard you saying that you're not voting for for um, Kamala or you're not voting for Trump. So my question is, are you really sitting this out? 
yeah, we're going to be very strategic with our boat and send a message by holding our boat and um, letting them know that we are a voting block and we are going to have to get something proactive in order for us to utilize our large voting block. So that's how we're, we're going to play this thing. But go ahead. Have you attempted to have someone uh, present your interest to the candidates? Or what kind of challenges are you experiencing with that? Um, yeah, with Kamala, she's already told us what she's not going to do. And Kamala's ducking and dodging and not giving real press conferences. She's doing a lot of these little staged interviews. So she's not going out here putting her position in the forefront at all. And um, we would like to speak with Trump. We would. I would actually like to sit down with Trump. I think that we would be able to get something um, from Trump first before we get something from Kamala. Because again, Kamala has already said what she's not going to do exclusively for black people. I think we would have a better chance getting something from Trump. So we'll see how that plays out. Okay, so, good. I was just curious about that, and I'm happy to hear that you're uh, actually thinking of going the Trump way. Uh, for some reason, I do think that Trump would be willing to listen to you and probably com compromise on some of the or some of the issues. Yeah. So I'm curious to see how that will go. I'll be following, and thanks a lot. All right, thank you so much, dear. I appreciate it. Now, Billy, are you good, Billy? You ready to speak, sir? Now, Billy, are you from over there in Kenya too, brother? Um, Billy's getting his, his phone together. Billy's getting it together. Shout out to everybody in here. We got a lot of people in here tonight. Shout out to everybody in here. Much respect to people in the diaspora who's joining in, chopping it up with us. Um, what's up, Halal? Let's see, Halal is down here. Let me get Halal. Halal is raising his hand. Halal, hop on. Halal, hop on. A lot of the... I'm good, Halal. How are you, brother? Great, great. Uh, glad to be talking to you. Glad to have you here. What's on your mind, sir? Well, uh, Tariq, have you seen the recent uh, you know, drama going on where this Arab woman blames uh, black soldiers for her people's <laughs> demise? Yeah, I saw that. That was real weird. Now, where is she from? Was she from where is she from? Israel or Palestine? She's from Palestine. Okay. Yeah, I heard I saw her video. I just saw a little clip where she's blaming black soldiers. I'm like, how the hell? And that was a very weird you know, rant that she went on. So yeah, these people are always trying to find a reason to to throw us under the bus. So that was interesting. But yeah, but go ahead, brother. But but you know. Even even in different parts of Africa, U.S. soldiers did come in and fuck up shit. Uh, and some of the people fucking up shit were your people. Shouldn't both whites and black Americans who benefit from the U.S. military complex basically be held accountable and liable for, for the crimes? Well, they would have to go to the heads of state for that, you know, because, you know, they're just soldiers working for a bigger entity. So it's not a personal thing with the soldiers and the soldiers aren't over there. The black ones definitely ain't over there committing any kind of war crimes or doing anything greasy. But they are killing people. Let's not lie, bro. Tariq, they, are, they have to kill people. So there you go. Who the, who the black soldiers? Both the white and black soldiers have to kill. Uh, they're trained to kill. Okay. That's the reality. You're telling me black soldiers don't kill these, uh, uh, Arabs who are defending, like, for example, the Palestinians uh, or just anybody like the Afghanistanis or the uh, Iraqis. They don't, are you telling me they don't kill? They, they're but, trained to kill. But to say that it's a black thing, that's disingenuous. Yeah, I wouldn't say that personally. Of right. course, I'm not saying that. That's, it's that's a, disingenuous blaming black people because there's no centralized institution where black people are calling the shots. So. Yeah, that's incorrect to say. Fair, fair, fair enough. Uh, did you know the head of the African uh, Union Command is a Black American, and he actually uh, allowed the bombings of different parts of Africa, uh, especially in the Sahel and in Somalia? 
Did you know that? Um, no. The the well, black head of the who? Uh, the head of the who? The African Union Command. Uh, the general. He's he's basically a black American guy, famous uh, general. So that's the reality. Oh, yeah. Huh? What, what what are you talking about? The African okay. Union Command. What the hell is that? You mean One Africa? Second. Yes, Africa. Africa. Uh, the head of that. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give me one second while I find this. Uh, yeah, you're trying to, you're trying to throw these little troll points out, but you haven't. I'm got not. Them. I'm not. Absolutely not. Why would I? His name is Michael E. Langley. Yeah. Yep, Michael E. Langley. Uh, he's the Africom leader. So he basically, yeah. he basically, he basically calls the shot when when it comes to places that one and he wants to bomb places that should be. Uh, you know, stuff like that. So what do you think about that? Should he be held, since he's high up in the food chain, should he be held accountable and liable for all the bombs he uh, and it commands people to, uh, basically? What do you think? Who does he call the shots with? There has to be a group of people who back him up. Who are the black people who's backing him up and calling the shots? He's just uh, a this is him alone. So, you know, uh, I'm just saying hold him not- accountable al- alone. I'm not talking about all black Americans. Like, I you would don't never control say that. a cop, sir. You don't control a military alone. You got to have somebody backing you up. There has to be a chain of command, sir. Who's the black chain of command with this guy? There's none. He's the only well, black. He's uh, just a token black people working for the white folks. Why don't y'all ever have some for the white people? Dude, we always. What are you kidding me? Did you see? What are you talking about? You saw the uh, you saw what happened to a lot of the uh, soldiers who came to Africa. Uh, you know, lots, uh, especially the white soldiers. They they got bulldozed. You know, so let's be honest. Everyone holds them accountable constantly. You know, they're the face of the U.S. military complex. No, they go over to because you're Somali, right? You're Somalian, and they basically go over there and just walk in and do what they want to do. So. Uh, I'm I'm not, sir, and that actually doesn't happen, sir. Uh, you're not no, Somali? No, I'm not. I'm, I'm, by the way, I'm Ethiopian, sir. I think, yeah, okay. Uh, so, Tariq, the, sound, reality, the uh, reality is, you're right, I do agree, uh, Black Americans shouldn't be uh, blamed for sure, but we are going to blame these token they, Black guys. We are going to blame these token Black guys. They don't get grace just because they're Black. No way. We're going to blame the token Black guys. Blame their white bosses, sir. How come you don't blame their white bosses? We, we blame the white bosses. So are you telling me just blame the white bosses and not the yeah. token Black guy? Yeah. Not, it, not the token Black guy who works for the white boss. Okay. I see what you're saying. I see basically what you're saying is don't uh, don't uh, blame the guy. He has blood on his hands, though. Let's get Sir Major in here, because Sir Major, do you, are you familiar with this guy and his bad? Yeah, that, that's Mohammed. Uh, I uh, nigga, you were buck broken by your stepdaddy, that's, nigga. That's you were buck broken by your stepdaddy and your foster dad, bitch ass nigga. You were buck broken, and you're still angry. Your stepfather literally buck broke you. Down, slow down, <laughs> Yo, <laughs> yo, this guy got right, damaged. Yeah, slow, slow down. Yeah, okay, just calm down, my guy. So that that's my guy, Muhammad. you still cry like a that, bitch about great. being that, that's Mohammed. Buck he's broken by your guy. step. He's pretending to be Eritrean uh, because he has stepfather. And you, so what? What the you're Somali crying. Do is, ha, ha, ha. Your you step Buck broke you, man. Your stepdad Buck, buck broke oh, you. Okay, okay, your foster. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Go go okay. ahead, Ramage. Go ahead. Yeah, he he's a, yeah. He, he tried so, to crash. So a, a lot of the times, what the Somalis do is when they're shame or embarrassed. Uh, because of whatever they're doing in the community, what they'll do is they'll oftentimes try to portray to be another ethnic group. Yeah. So what Muhammad is does, I know Muhammad from Clubhouse, and Muhammad made a mistake of threatening me and then actually sending me a copy of his ID. Okay. Oh wow. Yeah. So he knows that I know his father, uh, who was a captain in the Somali army. Okay, and his his father, um basically fled from the army. He, he he did not defend his country. He ran from Somalia and ran to the United States, okay? And he's an anchor baby, okay? So you're talking to an anchor baby who lives here uh, in America. He's doing he's doing okay for himself. Actually, when Reeves and I went to Columbus, we uh, he was scared to pull up on us, okay? Mm. So he sent the location to a mosque because he was scared to meet us at the Airbnb or meet him out in public, okay? 
But that's Mohammed. He he's he's a lot of bite. I mean, a lot of bark, no bite. He's pretending to be Eritrean on the app because he's got beef with them, and that's what they do. When they got smoke with other countries, they'll 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 cosplay as other people online. So when we talk about the the nurse out there in Columbus, Ohio, you know, it's real tricky with these people because they portray to be something else that they're not. Right. Yeah. So, so what yeah. what are the thing that woman is? Because everybody's trying to pawn her off to different. So I mean, we we've heard different things. Uh, oftentimes, what happens is they they can be a blend. So they can be half Somali, which is, you know, Oromo, and they can be another ethnic group. So right now it's a toss up. The Somalis are uh, aggressively, I mean, they've been all in the timelines and, you know, they're aggressive with this, but uh, I'm not going to waver. I'll let them figure it out. Okay. So we put the news out there. Y'all fight that out and y'all hold your tether class accountable. Yes, indeed. My man, thank you so much for clearing. Now, y'all knew Odu was a Somali. Yeah, he's 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 been on your stage plenty of times. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. My man. But thank you so much, Sir Major. There you go. Oh, boy. Boy, these tethers, boy. Boy, these tethers. Um, Billy, Billy, you you ready to go, brother? Trying to give Billy a shot. Billy Majungu. Billy ain't saying. I think Billy is doing some DoorDash orders right now. Billy ain't really. Billy's being silly. All right. All right, let's see. We got a lot of folks in here. And by the way, we're going to have an event at the Hidden History Museum Saturday, September 14th. Um, Our brother Dwan B is going to host. We're going to let everybody know the comics that we're going to have lined up. We're going to let folks know the food we're going to have is going to be catered. We're going to have an open bar. And let me let me say this. We're going to limit the open bar. Because uh, I give some of y'all way too much damn liquor, and that shit is going to stop. Um, people were drinking their ass off last time. Yeah, we, we're going to limit the liquor. I mean, let me say that. It's an open bar, but we're going to have two drinks for your ass. Because <laughs> people were going to town on our damn liquor when we had the open bar last time. Yeah, so... Um, but we're going to feed everybody. We're going to have very good food. We always have good food. It's going to be a good time. Great food, great comics, great drinks, um, great vibe. And the event is going to be September 14th at the Hidden History Museum. More details to come, ladies and gentlemen. And go visit the museum. Go, go If you're in L.A., just go down, visit the museum. Get some books and Blu-rays and deodorant and flags and just come see the iconic Hidden History Museum here in L.A. Let's get um, Aura Jail Simpson. Name. Aura Jail Simpson. You okay, dear? Aura Jail Simpson. What's up, brother? Unmute your microphone, sir. Hey, what's up, man? What's good with you? What's going on, Orgel? How are you, brother? Uh, no, man, I was trolling this tether ass nigga, man. I'm balanced, man. Oh, there, there you go, man. <laughs> What's going on with you? Man, shit, I'm chilling, Tariq, man. I'm kind of disappointed, though, man. They got your uh movie out of there, man. I was trying to go take my kids to go see it, you know what I'm saying, here in Chicago. But there you go. Yeah, it's coming back out. It's going Well, it's going to be back out on Blu-ray. Um, The new version is going to be back on Blu-ray, so you guys can go to Microphone Check for details on that, microphonecheck.com. For details on that, let's get Franklin Avery. Franklin Avery. What's up, Brother Franklin? Hey, what's good, Brother Flex? What's up, man? How are you, sir? I'm doing good, man. I'm blessed. I'm blessed to be alive. Yes, um, indeed. Yes, sir. So I was listening to that one tether from Gin- Guinea, wherever the fuck he's from. And yeah. it's just go to show you, man, why we can't really have true Pan-Africanism, because... We ride for them, but they don't ride for us the same way. You know what I mean? And you oh, yeah. asked them a real good question on, hey, how many uh, uh, gold medals you guys won? Because if he wouldn't want any gold medals, he'd been parading that and celebrating that for the whole world to see. But then when you have like our FBA brothers and sisters in the Olympics, like whooping ass out there, like you don't really see a lot of these tellers giving us credit and shit that we deserve. So it wow. just goes to show you, like, they really don't fuck with us like that because if it's true Pan-Africanism, how come they don't go out there and celebrate us the way we celebrate them? So that's all I really wanted to say. Be yeah. one. Thank you so much, brother. Yeah, and truth be told, man, a lot of them be rooting against us. 
for them, a lot of them be actually rooting against us in the Olympics, man. There was a lot of hate and saltiness coming from some of the tethers during the Olympics, the FBA brothers and sisters winning all those gold medals. And we saw some of the conversations the tethers were having online. They were low-key hating. They root against, they root for everybody against us. Real interesting. Let's get um, um, Ahmed, <clears throat> Dodgecoin. Um, I can't pronounce your name, but it, you got the word Dodgecoin in your thing. Go ahead, brother. And you got some Arabic words there, but go ahead, sir. Ahmed, a Dodgecoin, whatever your name is. Yes, salam alaikum. How are you? I'm good, man. How are you? How are you? I am sorry, English speaking Arab. Okay, where, where are you from, brother? Uh, I am from Algeria. From from where? I Algeria. am from Algeria. Algeria. There you go. There you go. Um, how long are you, are you still in Algeria or where are you in the U.S. now? Yeah. Okay, yes, yes. Uh, I love you, Spaz. I love you, Spaz. I love you, X. I love you, SpaceX. I love you, Dogecoin. Okay. Are you are you in Algeria now or are you in the U.S.? Uh, okay. Okay, he don't understand what I'm saying. Uh, are you... Um, okay. Where are you now? Sound like he's riding a camel. Are you get off that camel? Uh, no, no English. I am sorry. Two or three. Uh, calm down. Okay. Okay. No, where are no, you now? Are you in, no English. No English. I am sorry. <laughs> okay. Well, well, go ahead and get that baklava out of the oven. And... Yes. Sir. He just okay. He just okay. He can't understand nothing. Like where you from? Yes. Yes. Um, no, nigga. Well, I'm asking you a question. <laughs> Are you in France? Um, tomorrow. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, no. No. Okay, he's just saying stuff, bro. I don't know what he's talking about. He's all over the place. But God bless him. I need mean, You just got to get your, your language barrier together, brother. I don't know where you're, where you're going with it. All right. Oh, this cotton picking cracker. I remember cotton picking cracker. I remember the cotton picking cracker from the other day. What's up, cotton picking cracker? I to tell you, bro, you are so funny, bro. I didn't know you was this funny, dog. Like, bro, I love your stuff, man. Like, I really appreciate what you're doing for us, man. Seriously. Yes, sir, man. Yes, sir. What, what city are you in again, brother? I'm in Virginia right now, Richmond. Shout out to Richmond. I got family out there. Shout out to Richmond. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just wanted to get on and say that real quick, man. Thank you, man. I, thank you. I appreciate it. God bless you and your family. Yes, indeed. All right. Okay, we are in here. How many people we got in here? Okay, over a thousand in the middle of the night. Over a thousand people in the middle of the night. Shout out to everybody in here. Let me let me get off here. I because I do have work to do. I, I'll be on here all night, and so I got to cut myself off at some point. But I do enjoy spitting game and chopping it up with the family, as we always do. Um, I do need everybody to go to Hidden History Museum and make a contribution to the Hidden History Museum. We got a black institution that we got grassroots from the top, from the bottom, from the top. And it's an iconic institution here in L.A. and for the black community in the United States because we did it from the ground up and we need the grassroots family to support. So we need all the support we can get for the Hidden History Museum. So everybody make a contribution <clears throat> at hiddenhistorymuseum.com. Donica, we would like for you to make a contribution and not your cooch. Don't come down there trying to throw your cooch at nobody. We need you to go to Hidden History Museum and make a contribution to that, ma'am. Everybody make a contribution to the Hidden History Museum for Black Excellence, ladies and gentlemen. And um, go to rootworkstyle.com. Get that rootwork deodorant. And um, go to microphonecheck.com for the movie Microphone Check. Now I saw this on my IG feed. It just it saddened me, honestly. 
Let it be known I'm not just voting for VP Kamala Harris because she looked like me, because but also because she sits down to pee. Are they black women? And not all of you. Just the goofy ones. And I'm explaining. Instead of taking this opportunity to say, hey, our black children is just coming up missing and then get returned to us with no organs. We need policies in place to help protect our kids. Like, oh, she sits down to pee. Instead of, hey, I'm a professional. I'm going to work. How come I'm getting dragged out of my car by a race soldier, suspected, suspected race soldier? It's, well, she liked me. She sit down to pee. It's not, hey, give me something tangible. Where these doctors can't be killing my kids or giving, not giving us the medicine we need because we're black. It's, she sits down to pee. Joe Netta ain't the only one around here cosplaying a black woman. Kamala Harris talking about washing some greens in a damn bathtub. Never in my life have I heard such a thing. Y'all gonna let this woman play in y'all face all the way to the White House. Oh, wait, she's already here. She played in my face at the White House because I was certainly a Kamala Harris supporter for a, a very long time. Quit playing in my face and quit trying to pretend to be a black woman. Just be who you are and be okay with that. Everybody around here. Everybody around here. You are not us. Okay, I don't even know how many of, there, of us there are, but there's a limited amount of us and it's getting smaller and smaller by the generation because... Various reasons. Y'all know why. Statistically, y'all know why. Solon women, black American, Afro-American women who know nothing but this land over here are decreasing in numbers. They're cosplaying us and they're trying to erase us from history. I and then she was everybody's favorite Hindu Indian prosecutor and attorney general and senator, and now she becomes black. But, you know, I met her daddy, a uh, fine gentleman, Professor Harris. And the problem with her being black is Professor Harris says he's Caucasian, mixed Irish and Hindu. He doesn't have any black ancestors, but his Irish ancestors owned a lot of slaves in Jamaica and had them to work on plantation. So if mama is on the birth certificate listed as a Caucasian, daddy says he's a Caucasian, Caucasian Hindu and has no black ancestors, how did she get to be black? And by the way, she told one big lie when she was talking about she got bust because of something Biden did when she was running against him. Well, the yearbook that she put out there that you can still get online, from her high school in Canada shows she went from kindergarten through 12th grade in Canada, never went to school in the United States of America. She was born, by the way, in the same hospital that my ex-wife was born in, the same 12-month period, and my late mother-in-law was, in fact, a pediatric nurse in that hospital when Kamala was born. And the birth certificate that she has is interesting because the confusion comes from a mistake. On the birth certificate, it lists the mother's race as Caucasian, national origin into, uh, India, and religion Hindu. For the father, it does not list national origin. It does not list religion. It does not list anything about that, but where it says race, they put national origin in Jamaica by mistake. Distinct pleasure to introduce the first senator, and I'm not going to say this, the first senator of Indian American heritage in the history of U.S. Senate. So it's been a really long week. <laughs> and I'm really glad to be here. <laughs> um, but I want to thank you. And my, my Chitti is here, my mother's youngest sister. Um, Chitti Mahalakshmi Subhash is here. And I want to thank her. She flew in from Toronto to be with us this evening. Please, Chitti, will you wave? 
What's up, family? So I presume old buddy on this next clip is not FBA. I'm just looking at the facial features. Um, the messaging is on point. We're not doing the MAGA, you know, we don't do the MAGA thing. It's always policy of a party. Be one. Yo, check out the way Dr. Umar Johnson predicted the Kamala Harris event. I'm going to try to get there because that's going to be a circus. You ain't seen a nigga show in your life like what you're about to see. I cannot wait to see which rapper. I cannot wait to see which one of these house nigga celebrities is going to go to bat for the Democratic Party. Well, I'll be damned. To the sand pump on my outfit. Come sex quick because I ain't thirsty. These dudes mad mad. This is how the Democrat Party view black people. They pander to the lowest denominator. They think we're ignorant. And the problem with that statement is, a lot of black people prove them to be right. Interesting. If you look like me and you can side with the party that literally aligns themselves with the KKK because check notes, you believe they're good with the economy, you got a stimulus check, this means you are in fact a sellout and you willing to sell out the collective of your people in your community for the individual political gain or financial gain of yourself. Because if you believe that siding with the literal Confederate flag, Ku Klux Klaners in the name of the economy, it showed me that you think just like the massa. Exactly like them. I know it from back to back, though. What's the first book in the Bible? What's the first book in the Bible? Leviticus. Genesis. What's the last book in the Bible, Ocho? Appalachian. Remember when you asked me why I didn't vote for Kamala Harris and how could I be so anti-black woman? Let me show you. She put over 1,500 people in jail for marijuana violations and then laughed about it when she was asked if she ever smoked marijuana. She blocked evidence. She blocked evidence that would have freed an innocent man from death row until the courts forced her to do so. She kept people in prison beyond their sentences to use them as cheap labor for the state of California. And she fought to keep cash you, bail system in place that impacts poor people in the worst kind of way. Thank you. So while you were standing in line in your chucks and pearls, thinking that she was a black woman because she went to all the right schools, she pledged the right people because everybody knows that the black vote is the unknown variant. That means that they truly show up for what it is that they support. And the black community embraced and supported Kamala. When Kamala got in office, she told y'all that she wasn't black and she identified as otherwise. After she had utilized your educational system, your support, your fraternities, your sororities, and she turned around and gave you her ass to kiss. Y'all gonna vote for her again? Inquiring minds wanna know. Be one family.